Hi Photo students, uh, welcome to part two of our workflow demo videos. This video is going to highlight Adobe Bridge and how we have taken um, the images in our camera, transferred them through a memory card, and are now using Adobe Bridge to download those images and organize those images, view them, and choose which images we want to then take from Bridge to Photoshop. Now, in general, there's a, a kind of lengthy explanation of what uh, specifically Adobe Bridge is in technical terms, but in general, you can think about it as a more sophisticated photo editing, viewing, and organizing application. Now, if we're looking at this top window here, I just want to go over a little bit of the interface, but you have some presets where you can look at the um, interface or have this interface organized for you. Say, for instance, if I switch this to uh, a library preset, you can see how that switches the viewing platform and organizes it a little bit different. Uh, you can do film strip, output, metadata, keywords, and then there's a few more here, preview, light table. This little icon, by the way, gives you some more options and folders. Now, pay attention to this, by the way, these icons, because they'll start to repeat in all of our applications. Say, for instance, these little downward arrows let you know that there's a drop-down menu with more options. I'm going to start out with essentials. Uh, I'm not too heavily concerned with how you um, interact or customize this. Uh, I, in specific, in in general terms, want you to experiment and figure out what you like, what what works best for you. So I'm going to start uh, by downloading some images here first, so we can um, uh, get a better lay of the land in terms of how we could customize this, and then use this application to get us where we need to go. So if you're up in this menu item here, this menu bar, you can see that there's an icon here that looks like a camera with a little plus symbol. And when you hover over it, you can see that it says get photos from camera. We select this, it's going to open up a, a new window. Now some of you will open up this window and it'll show you this kind of standard dialog that looks like this. I want to make sure that you go to the advanced dialog. Now it's going to say, ask you where to get your photos from. I'm going to select, mine's untitled, but I'm going to select my memory card which is plugged into my uh, computer. Now I'm going to also then select this icon here where it says the plus symbol here and I'm going to open this up so I have a better view much larger view here. Now you'll notice that you have uh, individual images, videos, whatever you're taking. For our, for our course I have some videos and some images you know from my daily life. Now I'm going to um, show you how this interface works because it's slightly different than what we're used to in terms of uh, navigating our, our files on our computer. Now, you'll notice that there are little boxes underneath all of these images or different files that are checked. When I select a file and then select another file, you see that it deselects, or that is highlighted and then uh, de-highlighted uh, when you uh, move to the next file. Now, on a Mac, if I selected, say, this image right here and hold down Shift, and jump down to this image and select that while holding shift, all those images and files between get selected. If I hold down command, I can deselect images anywhere I want or reselect images without selecting between. Okay, now just because the images are selected and outlined, you can see that outline or highlight in blue doesn't necessarily mean they're selected in order to download. Now all the um, images or files that have check marks are in a selection mode. If I don't want to select every single image I have right now, there's 670 files, way too many, I'm going to uncheck here 
and then I can select a selection that I want. But if I just select, say, uh, these three images, they're not selected and ready for download until I hit that check mark. But watch, now that all three of those are selected, if I select one of them, all three of those check. Okay, so anything that is in blue and highlighted and um, being highlighted in blue are operating and in sync together when I hit that selection or that check mark. That's a little bit more in depth and unique uh, than uh, file organizing on a desktop in general. So. The next thing that's really important here is to see these options to the right hand on this right hand column. Over here, this is specifically the location of where you want your images to go. So in this case, I want my images to go to a specific spot. And what we're doing in our course is we're going to organize our images based on um, their file for or their assignment and then specific uh, sub assignments within that so for instance we have a long one assignment and we have three parts to that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a file structure here and I'm just gonna create a generic one for us so I'm gonna create a new folder I'm gonna title this assignments And underneath, I'm going to look in what's called column view so you guys can see uh, the path that I'm taking. So in assignments, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this long one. And for instance, uh, we're going to have a part one of that assignment. And then we'll also have a part two and a part three. So we're just going to start with part two. And underneath that assignment, what we're going to do is create subfolders for how we're going to organize the different edits in the process of um, management and editing our photos in order to separate them so we they have uh, different outcomes. So for instance, we're going to have a folder for the images in their unedited state. We're going to call those raw. Okay, so the raw files are going to be what I download directly from my camera and have no edits to them. They're just going to be the original image in its full capacity as it was shot from the camera. We're going to have an image we call a PSD file, and that's going to be the images that we're going to edit in Photoshop and save as what are called Photoshop documents or PSD files. Those are going to have all of our creative edits. So we're going to make sure that we uh, save those creative edits specifically uh, so we can come back to Photoshop if we need to and edit them and not lose any of those uh, layers or information or edits that we've created. Now the third file we're going to create is what's called a TIFF or print. Okay, now in our course, we're not in person or face to face. So um, if you're, this is the online section of our course, we're not going to be doing any printing face to face. So I'm going to walk you through and teach you how to create printable TIFF files for your images, but I'm not going to expect you to use them specifically in our course, um, but you're going to want to have that option in order to print um, on demand or do them online or in some capacity. Maybe you have a printer at home. Um, you may want to learn how to properly format images for print um, and resize them. Now the last file we're going to want is what's called a JPEG or we might even call it a web JPEG. And that's where we're going to resize our images for viewing online uh, through a screen or a monitor, uh, which has a different um, uh, required size and resolution uh, in order to make that uh, most uh, viewable and uh, uh, portable and um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Efficient in terms of its use online. So you are going to end up with four subfolders here. Uh, right now we're 
currently downloading our images directly from our computer. So I'm going to select that raw file and select open here. When I select open, the path or the location to where those are going to download are going to be specifically going to that folder. Now, I don't really want you to edit anything else here. I want you to know that there are options here, like you can save a um, duplicate copy to another location if you wanted to. Uh, you can delete the files after you're done downloading um, automatically. You can convert them to what are called DNG files, which is a, a raw format file that we'll talk about more in depth once we get a little more advanced in the course. And you can also change um, how it's going to organize your files based on uh, what's called metadata. Uh, metadata is the um, basic information that's recorded um, digitally to that image file. Um, specifically, in this case, it's the um, date and time it's shot. And so um, I want you to keep it where it's at with this year, month, and date. And the, the rationale there is that um, in terms of organizing files on a computer, you really want to organize your images uh, by year first, month, and then day, mainly because uh, it will be very difficult for most of us to remember um, the exact uh, month and day we may have taken an image but we work best by thinking in terms of years. So I can think, well, sometime last summer in uh, you know, 2019, I took uh, this image. And then I can kind of pare it down to maybe a month or a day because I now have um, a, a specific time period of maybe two or three months. Whereas if it started out by having my files organized by month, and then day, and then year, um, you could see where I would say, well, I knew that was maybe in the summer, but was it, you know, this year, last year, the year before, and then all my Junes for the last decade are going to be um, piling up and organizing together when I'm thinking, well, I know it was in a June period. So I think that will make more sense once you start practicing and organizing your files and searching for them. But uh, for now, take it um, for granted that it's going to, by default, organize you by year, month, and day, which I think is actually the wisest way to do this. So the very last thing you do once you have your images selected and make sure they're checked, the uh, images you want, you're going to select what's called Get Media. And you'll see it says Get Media. It's uh, showing you that it's downloading. And once it's downloaded, it should automatically pop up in Adobe Bridge. Now you can see that it's organized here, right? These are my three images. Now I can choose how I want to view this content, remember? So you do have a few um, ways of doing this. I'm going to see, I'm going to reset standard windows or reset workspace and see what happens. There we go. I'm going to reset this workspace because I had kind of messed around with it uh, a minute ago and I'm resetting it as the essential window and you can see that it's going to show this is the um, file structure on my computer so it's basically giving me a way of navigating my computer files through Adobe Bridge. It's also when I select these giving me a preview of that image to the right here and underneath that's giving me metadata. And this metadata here uh, is showing me uh, what f-stop it was shot at, uh, some of the specifics of the, the information in ter terms of uh, the technical facets of what was recorded to that file. So how I actually shot this image and then it spells it out a little here too and you can see it has date and time and uh, those kind of aspects. It also shows me where the path is up here of that image on my computer. And then you have some specific ways of viewing this that you can customize, like maybe you want to increase each individual image size. Maybe you want to have outlines that grid them separately, thumbnail, right? 
an image with some of that data specifically there. Maybe you want to have it in list form. And then again, you have some more viewing options here. Now, um, you can also scroll on this as well. I personally don't don't really care about much of this. Um, so whatever works for you is totally great. Now, the last thing that you may care about when looking at some of this here is that you can actually rank these images. So say I want to do four stars for this one and four stars for this one, but I only want this one to have two stars because I don't really like it, but I'm not ready to delete it yet. So I can up here, I can organize and only filter the four star images so it'll only show that. Maybe I really like this one, I want that to be five stars now. I can show only the five star images and so on. You can also sort things by different um, criteria. Now, what we're going to do here, we need to get this image into Photoshop. So I'm going to show you how we're going to get it into Photoshop. And then in part three, I'm going to do another workflow demo. And I'm going to show you what I'd like you to do with each of these images as we move through some of the basic functions and techniques in the course and getting those images to the point where we're ready to have them on display on our website.